Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm41975 and today we are back in SnowRunner, continuing our SnowRunner Let's Play series. We're back in Lake Covd again today, continuing our Lake Covd mini-series. And um, if you haven't seen the previous episode that we did on Lake Covd, then definitely recommend you go and watch that before you watch this episode. Um, but just a quick recap, if you have missed that previous episode, we went and actually discovered the brand new Ford F750. It's a brand new vehicle that just got added in the game. It was absolutely incredible. Um, we went and tried to tow it out with the Hummer, but uh, unfortunately the Hummer didn't really have enough power to pull it out and I uh, didn't have any other trucks around at the time, so I wasn't able to pull it out. Um, so today, that's what we're going to go and do. We're going to go and rescue the F750, claim it as our own, and then we can use it in the next episode. Uh, but we did actually discover another new truck, the Tuz 16 Action. It's an absolutely awesome little truck. It's got loads of cool customization. So I recovered it to the garage, and I figured today we'll go and customize the thing and see if we can tow the F750 to the north camp with that thing and here it is the tus 16 action it's absolutely awesome looking it's got this awesome little camo livery on there it's got a really short little bed on the back i have test drive this thing very very quickly um i didn't upgrade it at all um everything you're gonna see right there is the stock customization that's just how i found the vehicle um, but it is actually very quick. It's a very quick little vehicle, um, but it's got loads of cool customization. So let's get straight into it. Um, now, I have gone in, as always, and got the most important upgrades, the upgrades that I think that we kind of need on the vehicle. Um, there are a bunch of different engines you can put in this thing. Um, you can put this Laz 6 T195, and you can see there that doesn't improve anything it actually decreases the fuel consumption so there's really no point in that one and you can get the m uh, the imz 6210 which you can see there decreases the fuel consumption but it does increase durability however the stock engine as you can see there um it's got a minus fuel consumption which isn't bad for a vehicle like this that's pretty good and the power to weight is S plus, so it's the best power to weight that you can actually get, which is incredible. So I'm gonna leave the stock engine in there. We're gonna put the off-road uh, gearbox in this thing. Um, that does increase the durability as well, which is nice. The suspension, you can raise the suspension, which I have gone ahead and uh, got the upgrade for that. So we can actually go ahead and upgrade the thing. The tyres, now, uh, let me just scroll down, 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 and we get to the mud tyres right here. These are the, um, these are the same wheels, uh, or the same tyres, I should say, that we can actually get on the Tega, uh, the Tega 6436. That's an absolutely awesome truck in this game. And uh, one of the main things with that vehicle is the tyres. And we can get them on this brand new vehicle. And because we've got the lift kit on, we can go up to a 47 inch tyre, which is actually very big. Um, 39 standard, 43 you can get, um, I think with the stock suspension. Or if you have the lift kit, you can get the 47s on there. They're absolutely awesome. They're going to be super for today's episode. So I'm going to throw those on there. The winch. Now, there is actually an interesting winch that you can get on this that I've not seen on any of the other vehicles yet. Um, you might be able to get it on the other vehicles, but I haven't seen them. And it is actually the autonomous medium. Um, so the autonomous scout winch that you can get on most of the scout vehicles um, allows you to use the winch even if you stall a vehicle which is actually really useful um, but it's not the most powerful winch and it doesn't have a great range but this thing it allows you to use the winch when the engine is stalled it has um, 
um, it's not as powerful, but it does have a longer range, which is absolutely super. So I'm going to stick that in the vehicle today. I have a feeling we may roll at some point. Hopefully we don't, but I mean, um, yeah. Then we've got the frame add-ons right there. Um, you can see we can get the uh, maintenance or the maintainer frame add-on. It's supposed to be like the van body add-on, I guess. Um, it actually looks really like utilitarian now. Um, it does look like an army vehicle. You can get the small sideboard bed, which is like what it comes with standard. And this can only hold one unit of cargo. We should just mention that. Um, it's really dinky, uh, but looks really cool. You can get the fuel carrier, small fuel carrier. And that, it doesn't actually tell us how much extra fuel that gives us. But it's quite big, so I can imagine it's probably quite a lot of extra fuel. You can get the loading crane with the um, with the like sideboard bed, and we can actually get a roof rack up there as well, which is really cool. And it adds some like fog lights and stuff on. This thing doesn't have a massive fuel tank; it only has a 110 liter fuel tank. So any extra fuel that we can get on this thing is going to be useful. Um, I don't honestly know do we need a loading crane I don't think we really need a loading crane I'm just gonna leave the uh, sideboard bed on there or do we go for the fuel no I'm just gonna leave the sideboard bed on there we have got engageable diff lock and all-wheel drive on this thing so that is really cool the snorkel we can get the tall front-facing snorkel which is just there or you can have the short round cap which is just a neat little a little one up there by the mirror I'm just gonna go for that one because it looks nice and neat in miscellaneous we have um, the double tall beacons which are just on the side there you guys know that I'm not really a fan of those they just kind of look a bit weird um, you can get the small parking lights I do like those I'm a big fan of parking lights they look cool we can get the external horns, which look a little bit weird, I'm not going to lie. And you can get the twin horns on one side. I like the parking lights, so I'm going to put those on. The rear bumper, um, you can actually um, put the mud guards back in there, which you can see are just there. Uh, but as standard, there are no mud guards. I think it's better without them, to be honest. The tyres are way too big for the mud guards anyway. It looks a bit stupid. So we'll leave them off. On the front bumper, there are a few different options. You can get the Hunter, which is like a very extreme, like it's got the roll bars on there. The winch is actually like hooked a along the front there, which looks really cool actually. You can get the heavy duty, you can get the crossbar with fog lights, I really like that, that that looks really cool. And you can have the stock one there, I'm going to go for the crossbar with fog lights. I don't know what it is, but I, I have some sort of obsession with fog lights, the more lights you have, the better it looks. So I mean, um, yeah, I like that, looks really cool. And then, unfortunately, we can't change the rims, but honestly, I really like these rims. They look really, really cool. And then in the paint section, we have got all the usual solid colours, um, but the camo liveries, um, I think these are all very similar to the ANK liveries. So we've got this stock one. Uh, we've got like an urban camo, like the grey and black. We've got like a desert camo, which looks really cool. Uh, we've got like a forest camo with like the dark green, the gray and the black. And then we've kind of got an inverted version of that, kind of like a mountain camo. Looks really nice, uh, but I'm not actually gonna go for one of these today. I think we might go with the white, like we did on the ANK. It actually does look quite cool. Um, although I don't think it really goes with the with the bed so actually yeah I think I'm gonna go with this one because that matches the bed a little bit more and that is the thing fully customized there's not a whole lot you can change on this thing but you can make it look completely different and uh, I just thought I'd point out it does look a little bit like the um, 
the ramp vehicle that they used in Fast and Furious 5. At the very start, there's like a off-road truck thing. I'll have a picture so you know what I'm talking about. It kind of looks a bit like that. Uh, but that is the thing fully customized. We know where we're heading today. So let's just get straight out there and get to the F750. Okay, so here we are outside for the first time in the TUS 16 Action. Um, I have to say, this thing has been raised quite a lot. Those tyres are absolutely massive. Um, it does also smoke like a train, but it does look really cool. I have to say, it looks fantastic. Um, the turning radius isn't brilliant. I will just point that out. Um, we do have all-wheel drive on this thing, so I'm just going to go ahead and activate that. We have got diff lock as well, which is engageable in the low range, and um, obviously with the um, the off-road gearbox, we have got uh, low plus and low minus, so we can go for rock crawling or we can go for like high speed, um, low range, I guess you'd call it. Um, right, so we're going to turn off here, and you might be saying, well, why aren't you taking the same route? as you went in the Hummer. Um, well, if you guys have watched that episode, the route in the Hummer was absolutely horrendous. Um, it was only a like 25 minute video, I think, but it was actually about three hours. I cut that video down extensively. Um, it was quite a long video. It took me ages. Some of the points um, I got completely stuck at. Um, look, the Hummer did get me out. I didn't use any of the vehicles to help me out. Um, so that's just something to point out. But yeah, it was quite a bad route. And I know this route that we're going to be taking is not quite as bad. Um, I've driven this route a few times. It's, it's quite nice. Um, it could be nicer, let's face it. I'm actually going to leave it there. The, the high range, or like the low plus, is... Um, is basically automatic but it allows you to use the engageable diff lock which is quite useful especially in this map um but yeah we're gonna cruise we're gonna cruise we're gonna cross the frozen lake just in a moment we've uh, crossed it in a few of these lake coved episodes so far it's not really as bad as i thought um, the falling through the ice thing, they made it out to be quite a, like, um, like, a, quite a scary thing, but honestly, it's not that bad. It's coming up with that, like, thing again. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because we're using the diff lock too much, but you can see it, like, changes colour. <laughs> That's really strange. I've never seen that before. Uh, but yeah, this the um, falling through the ice in this map, it's not as bad as they make it out to be. If you fall through the ice on this map, um, the worst that will happen is you drown your vehicle, you just reset, or you go and get another vehicle to pull you out. It's not, it's not really that concerning. Yeah, it wastes a bit of time, but I mean, it doesn't, it, sometimes you can actually drive the vehicle out. I got the APC stuck, that went through the ice. And I just drove out of it again. I'm going to go across here. This thing has big floaty tyres on it. So I'm curious to see if that has any impact on the ice. It doesn't. So the fatter the tyres you have on the vehicle, the more... Um, or like the less pressure it puts on the ground. And um, the less likely you are to go through the ice. So things like this that has big tyres. Obviously the Tega has the same tyres. Um, the Khan Marshall that has massive floaty tyres on it. Anything like that with uh, big fat tyres on is nicer on the ice. I'm not saying you can't fall through because you probably will at some point. Um, but it's it, pr it puts less pressure on the ice and you're less likely to go through. Um, things like the uh, the International Lodestar and some of the highway trucks that have like really thin wheels, they will go through the ice a lot easier because they have like thin pizza cutter wheels on them. Um, so just something to point out, uh, something that I've learned. And uh, I also mentioned in the last episode, like 
what ice and what ice is not safe so uh, I'm not going to repeat that but uh, if you want to know what ice is safe to drive on then go and check out the last episode if you haven't already um, this as I recall is actually ice here so I'm not going to drive across there um, I'm going to stick it in low plus we're going to go around here now when you've got diff lock on and this is real this is true in real life as well your steering is considerably worse so um, if you're trying to make a tight corner and maybe you can't reverse if you can disengage diff lock sometimes that might help you it might just give you that little bit extra steering capacity just to help you get around the corner that's true in real life as well um, a lot of people like weld the diff up um, so they can do like burnouts and, and get their car to drift and that kind of thing and while that's all good and fun and I'd probably do that myself um, your steering is considerably worsened when you do that so if you're going to weld the diff on your car then uh, something to bear in mind right so I'm just going to pull over here for a second because um, where we're heading to is up here and I know uh, we've taken a bit of a long route uh, but I know this route is quite safe and I think this is probably oh no because uh, yeah ignore me anyway um, so yeah we want to continue on here when we get to this facility thing um, who okay so yeah this bridge here that's something just to bear in mind is out so that is not an option um, I have been down here on this ice off camera and it's not too bad so if we come into this place here go down onto the ice here and then if we can make it up here back onto the road I have done that off camera and it's not too difficult and then we basically just want to stick on this road and we've not uncloaked this bit but hopefully the rest should be fairly nice it is struggling a little bit with this uh, snow bank right here. Um, I've got it in low plus, all wheel drive, diff locks, blah blah blah. Um, it is struggling a little bit with that. We have now got through it. Um, yeah, this thing, um, I'll give you the review on this thing now that I have driven it for a little bit. Um, it's very good actually. The um, it's doing that weird thing again. Uh, we'll turn diff lock off. Um, the fact that this thing can have an autonomous scout winch on this thing is actually very, very useful. Um, you might underestimate that winch, but the fact that you can use it without the engine having to be on is really useful. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about this bit. Um, it's not difficult, we can just go down here. Um, the tyres on this thing are absolutely incredible. We saw with the Tega how good they were when we built the Zingnagorsk uh, garage. Um, that those tyres helped us out massively when we uh, when we were trying to get out of the quarry. So the fact that we can get these massive tyres on this thing makes it really useful, and they are massive tyres. Um, there are trucks in this game that can get bigger tyres, but not many. None, there's no trucks this small that can get this big of tyres on. Um, the fact that you can lift this thing as well makes it really useful. Um, because with these big tyres and the lift kit on, the ground clearance in this thing is incredible. And um, the fact that the front tyres are right near the front of the vehicle and the back tyres are right near the back of the vehicle, because this thing's so stubby, that is actually a good thing because it means that the front and the back don't get stuck on the ground um, so that is actually a useful thing it is a little bit odd looking I will give it that um, personally I quite like the look of it it does look really cool um, might not be to everyone's taste um, the only thing that's a kind of a shame about its size is the fact that the bed can only hold one cargo um, so if you're going to use this vehicle for like uh, any missions you'll be making uh, quite a few trips because it can obviously um, hold that much cargo as we got a massive tank slapper just then um, 
but the fact that we can get some uh, fuel on the roof, the uh, the frame add on on the roof, that is actually really cool. I've not seen many of the bigger trucks that have that ability. This is kind of like a big scout vehicle. It's not in the scout class, but it is effectively a scout vehicle. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the vehicle. It obviously has all-wheel drive and diff locks, which is really useful. Um, it's very, very powerful, actually. The power to weight, as we saw, was S. Uh, I think it was S+, plus, which is the best you can get in this game. Um, so, obviously, that is really good. But I have to say, it is a very good vehicle. Um, obviously, it's not going to be that great for, like, missions and karting stuff. It can, obviously, pull a trailer. So, you can always use a trailer. Um, but as a, like big scout vehicle for what we're doing here like rescuing other trucks it is superb for that because obviously it has enough power to pull stuff it's got the size and the weight to pull stuff but it's small enough that it can go through like little little crevices and stuff i'm just going to pull over here for a second and have a look where we are so we basically want to carry on on this road um it's actually a pain that I haven't uncloaked this because this is where we need to end up. The F750 is just there. Um, I don't know whether we want to go to here or what we want to do. It looks like that is sort of the only route because, I mean, it splits off into two here, but this one just goes around to here anyway. So I guess that's where we want to go and hopefully there's like a corner across to here or hopefully we can at least just get to there and then the F750 is just there and I've left the Hummer there as well just in case we needed some extra fuel. Here is another one of the uh, military bunkers as well which is another um, really cool feature actually of this map. Um, Obviously, the main the main thing that you're supposed to do in this map, I believe, is go and rescue a World War II bomber. Now, I haven't seen any missions that sort of show how you do that yet, so I don't know if that's going to be something that's added later or if that's already available. Um, but there are at least these uh, three World War II bunkers in this game, or they might be Cold War bunkers, but whatever they are... Um, they're really cool actually, it's a nice little feature in the game, one of the missions you actually have to go and visit all three of the bunkers, and we've gone. We have gone in the, in the, um, in the Acteon. Uh, luckily we have the Autonomous Scout on here, however we have flipped in kind of a bad location, this wasn't the best location in the world to flip because that is the only um, pole around which is kind of a pain okay so I have just arrived in the Hummer um, the road ahead doesn't seem too bad um, it was quite difficult in the Hummer uh, so I don't want to say too much um, do I think the Actian is a better off-roader than the Hummer I don't know, I don't know honestly, I haven't driven the Actian enough to know yet, but it does have those big bloated tyres on it, so hopefully that should help it out. Um, we've got the Hummer here anyway now, so let's go ahead and rescue that Actian. And just like that, the thing is rescued once again. Um, let's leave the Hummer there and jump back in the Actian. Now, let's not have any more rolling occurrences. Um, we haven't rolled for quite a while in this uh, Let's Play, which is nice. Um, I try not to roll as much as possible. You know, obviously I like to be realistic and all that. Um, Fuel-wise, uh, we're not doing great, actually. Um, we are struggling a little bit. I kind of regret not putting that fuel add-on thing. Um, we obviously have the fuel on the roof that we can still use, but we are quite... Um, well, we still have quite a long journey to go yet. So, I have no doubt we're going to make it to the F750, but how far we'll make it after that, I honestly have no idea. So... Yeah, we'll just we'll just see how it goes. We can always bring some fuel to it if we absolutely need to. 
Um, I'm trying to get on this little island here, but it's not really wanting to. Right. Um, we have made it to the F750. Um, shall we see? I don't know whether we can nick it. Okay, so I don't think we can nick fuel out of that F750. Until we own it, I don't think we can. Let's see if we get a bit closer. Okay, we actually can. Um, it's got 27 litres left in the F750. When we try and tow it out, it's going to use that fuel. Uh, because if it has fuel in it, then the engine will drive. And when you're winching it, it will, it will use the engine to try and help you. So, do we put the fuel in the Actian, or do we do we leave it in the Ford for a bit of extra help? I feel like we put it in the Actian because we've got further to travel. I feel like this thing should be okay to pull that out of there. So yeah, I'm gonna go and put it in the Actian. Um, there is still three liters of fuel in that thing, so. Yeah, it's not a lot, but it does have a little bit of fuel left in it. So, uh, if we can at least get it out of this bad part. This was really bad um, when we came here in the last episode. Let's go ahead and hitch it up to there. I'm actually going to go high rate at our low plus diff lock. And let's see whether this thing can actually pull the F750 out. It is moving. That is something the Hummer wasn't doing, was moving. Um, right, we've we've made it out of the worst part of the river now. Um, it's coming up with that weird thing again, so I'm going to stick it in automatic. That is going to do slightly less off-roadness. Um, but we've made it out of that river. That is actually a horrible piece of terrain. If you're driving on this map, try and avoid that river. It really is quite bad. Um, if you are going to rescue the F750, then I'd recommend you have a big truck because that has been slightly horrible. Uh, we are also struggling here a little bit. I don't want to release the F... Okay, yes. I thought it was going to roll down the hill, but apparently not. Um, I think that's too far forwards. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, we're just passing the army bunker that we went past in the Hummer. I don't think I actually showed you that in that video. I can't remember, honestly. Um, I can't remember if I cut that out of the video or not. But um, I might leave it in this time for you because it's quite cool, actually. I do like this little feature. There's three army bases on this map uh, that you have to actually go and... Um, like kind of visit it's just one of the missions you have to just make it to each of the bases and it's quite cool i mean um one of the things in this map that you can go and do is actually rescue the world war ii bomber and um obviously if that's a world war ii bomber they've got like world war ii bunkers although some of these do look a bit cold war-esque so i'm not really sure but it's nice that they've got like a war theme that is quite cool uh, the other thing is, I've just noticed, we have only got 12 litres of fuel left, which is not enough to get us to where we're going. Um, yeah, we've only got 4 litres left of fuel. Um, I think that is actually part of the reason that it is struggling. So what I'm going to go and do is grab the Hummer with a fuel trailer on the back and fill the thing up and then we will continue. Okay, right. Um, I have brought the Hummer over here with a fuel trailer and for those of you wondering why did I bring a fuel trailer all the way here when I could have just used the fuel out of the Hummer and the roof rack it's because I want to fuel the roof rack on the, um, the Tuz, the fuel in the Tuz and I also want to fill up the F750 because I feel like that's kind of useful and I also thought if something does go drastically wrong I want to keep fuel in the Hummer as well so um, let's just go ahead and refuel all of those might have to see now one of the other things that you can actually use with the uh, winch is when you've got it uh, when you've got 
the back of a truck like stuck on a rock like this it's clearly not going to go over there but you can actually use the winch kind of as a crane um, what I mean is if you park it right above the other bit you can actually lift the back of the other truck up sometimes doesn't always work there we go yeah that did actually work quite nicely there the back of the Ford is just slightly stuck let's go all-wheel drive diff locks there we go we are slowly slipping to the side of it which is not really where I want to go all right this is now the limestone pavement thing that I've been on about uh, we did drive over this in the Hummer in the last episode with the the exploration unit, the, the like mobile watchtower trailer thing, and um, it was interesting, is how I'll put it. I will just detach the Ford for a moment. Let's actually just. Thank God there is a tree there that is fairly solid. Um, yeah, these uh, rocks here are very, very slippy. So you have to be quite careful. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got to get the Ford up there. That's going to be... gonna be interesting right can we just yank it on there let's go for yeah there we go so sometimes keeping the winch short just like there can actually be very useful because um, it you can actually use the winch like as a little bit of a crane uh, so if there's a lip like that can be quite useful now this part here is quite narrow these tires are also not very good I don't like where that wheel is I would like to be a little bit more that that's going oh okay I don't like where this is heading right I'm just gonna oh oh I'm just going to winch to that tree, just for a second, I'm just going to pull that front end round and sort my sort myself out a little bit. I thought that was going then, for a second there it did start sliding, uh, when we put that handbrake on it did just start sliding a little bit. I also don't want the Ford to go over because if the Ford goes over it's going to drag us down with it. The Ford, the Ford, the front end of it is going over. I don't want that thing to go over. I, w I, I couldn't release the winch there. That was uh, absolutely terrifying. Uh, we have managed to clear this section. Where are you wandering off to, truck? Sometimes when you're on these like very slippy rocks and stuff, the truck will just suddenly veer off to one side. Um, but anyway, um, we have made it through that section. So let me just pause the map for a second and actually just show you where we are with this. So we're here currently. That is where we have to deliver it to. So not all that far away. This is actually where the Action was that we saw in the previous episode where that service trailer is. So we've got what appears to be a lovely straight road to the camp but this is a quite bad bog we struggled um for quite a lot of this in the previous episode um i didn't show much of it on camera but i was actually stuck in that bog for about an hour so yeah not all that fun however this thing is slightly better in the mud so i mean hopefully we shouldn't have too too many issues I'm still going to stick to the edge obviously um, so if we do need to winch to a tree we do have that option right that is where we have to deliver it to just there that is the 
uh, North Camp. Um, and the question that I'm wondering, which probably none of you guys are wondering, is how the hell the Ford got stuck there in the first place. Why was the Ford there in the first place is what I'd like to know. I mean, they were probably going exploring in it, but I mean, let's look, let's face it, it's got road tyres on there, it's got no lift kit, it's got spare wheels, um, but other than that, it is a pretty stock truck. I mean, yeah, trucks are good, but not that good. However, we have finally, finally delivered the Ford. Um, some car, some car he has there, a bit heavy though, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but anyway, thanks for your help. You get the Ford F750 as a reward, along with 410 RP and 4100 credits, which is actually quite nice. That brings our total up to 65 grand, which is actually not bad. It's a it's a pretty good mission. However, it does take a long time, so um, there's just something to bear in mind. Let's go ahead and jump into the Ford. Now we've dragged it all this way. And now you get a look at actually how long this vehicle is. It really is a long vehicle. Um, we can obviously drive it, but the tyres on this thing are road tyres. It's got no lift kit on it. It's got no off-road upgrades. It does look like it's quite high, but you can raise this thing quite a lot. Um, the horn is a bit pathetic i'll give it that uh, but it is a really cool vehicle um there are loads of off-road customization options for this thing we can make this thing a lot better and that is what we're going to be doing in the next episode of snow runner so if you're interested in watching that then don't forget to subscribe to the channel also don't forget to like the video if you have enjoyed it's taken me a long time to record this video and edit it so um i really would appreciate you dropping a like if you did enjoy and um leave me a comment what you think of the action and what you think of the ford but that is going to do it for today's video guys thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next time